Today we're going to be talking about infinite geometric series. So the sum of an infinite geometric series. So the sum is, so the sum of an in infinite geometric series provided that the ratio, whether it's positive or negative, so the absolute value of it is less than one. Okay, so your ratio is a fraction less than one is your first term divided by one minus r. Okay, remember how the sum of the nth terms was a sub one times by one minus r to the n over one minus r. Now let's think about as n gets really, really big and r is a fraction, what could happen to that? Okay, that's gonna get really, 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 really small. Okay, so that's gonna get close to one. So basically, that goes to one, so that's why our formula is what it is. And again, your ratio has to be less than one. If your ratio is greater than one, we have no sum. Okay, and there's special words that we have now for if a series has a sum and has no sum. A convergent series converges to a number, is a series with a sum. Divergent is a series with no sum. So keep that in mind. Now, convergent versus divergent. So when you're looking at this, notice how this first one on the left here, to get to the next term, we'd multiply by one half. We'd multiply by one half again. We'd multiply by one half again, and so on. So these numbers keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Notice how the sum keeps getting closer and closer and closer, it looks like, to one. And when you're graphing and you add up all these values, looks like you're getting closer and closer and closer to one. Okay, so this would be convergent versus a divergent. Notice how basically if you've flipped these, now I'm multiplying by two. And these numbers keep getting larger. And they're getting larger exponentially. Remember we talked about how this would look like an exponential function. So this one diverges because the numbers, the values of your sum keep getting larger and larger and larger. You guys can see that as you see that their sum is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, determine whether each, each infinite geometric series is convergent or divergent. And then um, they don't want us to find the sum, it just tells us whether it's convergent or divergent. So find your common ratio. Remember your common ratio is 243 divided by 729. When I find that, we get that value to be one third. Just do a quick check that 243 times by one third is equal to 81, so yes. We have a common ratio for the three terms that they show this, so this is convergent. Now, let's look at this. So I have 5 over 2 is going to be our common ratio. I take the second term divided by the first term. When I take 5 and I multiply by 5 over 2, we do get 12.5. But our ratio here, even though it's a fraction, our ratio is greater than 1. So this diverges. Okay. Okay. Finding the sum of each infinite geometric series. Again, doesn't this kind of look like our expression for the nth term? So that tells me that our ratio is 0.5. It tells me our first term is equal to 4. So the sum of our infinite is our first term over 1 minus 0.5, which is equal to 8. Next one.
just confirm that this is a geometric series. We multiply by one fourth, again multiplying by one fourth and consistently. That's what we're multiplying by. So our common ratio is one fourth. Our first term is four. So our sum is equal to four over one minus one fourth. So I have four over three fourths, four times by four over three. Our value there is 16 over three for our sum. Okay, C. C is again very much like one that I did earlier, where this is in that equation form. So that tells me my first term is 9, 1 minus my ratio, which is 0.7, finding that we get 30. And again, we could find all of these because our ratio was less than 1. Now let's look at the next one. Okay, to get from 20 to 24. 24 over 20 is equal to 6 over 5. Now if I take 24 and I multiply by 6 over 5, we do get 28.8 .8, and then we would get 34.6. So our common ratio, 6 over 5, well that is greater than 1. Okay, so therefore... This has no sum versus all the other ones that can have a sum. That means again that this diverges and all of them, all the other ones converge. Okay, there are your two lesson questions. So you're going to tell me whether or not this converges or diverges, and then you're going to find the sum. And please make sure that is submitted on time.